Glory, 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 
All right, turn your Bibles to Acts 1. I don't got nobody in here that's happy that they just got God. He'll be your food when you are hungry. He will clothe you when you don't have no clothes. He will make ways for you when there is no way. He will pick you up when you are down. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. I thought y'all was ready to say, okay. All right, Acts 1. My God. I just want you to look down as a sign of looking at the gates of hell. And I want you to say, hell, you tried it, but I still got it.
verse number six. It could be a praise service if y'all would just act right. Oh. All right, let me get this out. Let me go real quick. somebody's family in here. And this is premature death. But our praise is about to shoot that thing away. Now, I know we don't I don't know whose family it is. But all I know is we need to give God praise so that the spirit of death I decree your death is going to rebuke praise. I, mean, I, I decree that your praise is going to rebuke death. I need you to praise God because what the enemy meant for bad, God's about to turn it for the good. I need you to praise him. Oh, it's a sure word. We find the spirit of death. The blood, the blood.
let me preach real quick. Sit down. Sit down. Let me preach real quick. Acts 1. I just got to give this word. Lord did finally speak to me last night. Because I don't preach if I don't have a word. Somebody say amen. amen. I just don't. So don't be offended. I love you guys. Don't lose air right here. Praise God. Not about the glory spot. Right here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's air right here. I just want you to know you're about to hit your air spot. You're about to hit the spot where you can breathe. I said, you're about to hit your air spot. Y'all don't like that. You, oh, God. Okay, the earth is the Lord and the fool is there. Right? You get a word out of everything. It all belongs to you. All right. So when you heard Bishop say I didn't want to preach, it wasn't because I didn't. I don't love you. I love you guys. It was because I didn't have no word. Come on. If we had more preachers that would be honest when they don't have a word, we would see more breakthrough in the mouth of him whom God has anointed. But the Lord did speak to me last night. Hallelujah. He had to. <laughs> he had to. I got a word for this house. Now, listen. What you have to understand is in your leader is wrapped your destiny. The only reason why God will call you to a particular place is because in the fulfillment of that house will come the fulfillment of your call. You have a universal call that is the call to the church. You have a call for your purpose and then you have a call to the church. You have three calls in life. The universal call that we might win souls when we might win the loss. You have a personal call. The thing that God has ordained for you to do and then you have a call of God something that is put upon your life that edifies God's kingdom somebody say amen. amen so whenever God calls you to a house it is because there is in that mantle woven your destiny in that mantle is woven your purpose in that mantle is woven your parts of your destiny and as the man of God fulfills his call and his duty to the local assembly, which is you, you begin to see what is on your life. It begins to expound and be edified. It begins to grow. You begin to see your life change. And God begins to position you and prepare you for a place called destiny. Uh -huh. Let me just kill this lie real quick. Kill it, kill it. Destiny is not a destination of prosperity. If you really look up the word prosperity in the Bible, prosperity is a, is a direct effect of when your soul has come to a prosperous place. When you are mentally, which is soulishly, your will, your emotions, your intellect. When you are mentally healthy, you have hit a place of prosperity. There are people who have money, but they're mentally sick. They're ill. And the very thing that they have ends up killing them. What God's agenda, in, he said, beloved, I wish of all things that you prosper. You can have even as your what? Even as your soul prosper. Why is it that God wants us to prosper? Because he has given us all things. Amen. Daily we are loaded with benefits. But God is more concerned about the state of your soul because that's the thing that's going to live in eternity. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm going somewhere. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, I got to give you a little something. All right. Somebody say amen. amen. I said God wants your soul to be healthy and to be prosperous because that is the thing that lives in eternity. Anything that we build here is temporal. Did you hear what I said? Huh? Anything you build, even your marriage can't go with you to heaven. That stuff is temporal. Yeah, it is. Uh huh. Are you hearing me? Anything that you build in your life in this lifetime is temporal. Hezekiah had reached such a place of prosperity in his soul that when it came time for him to die, he turned his face toward the wall and said, I ain't ready. Yeah. That's right. Glory to God. And God added to him 15 more years. 15. That's the word. But see, Hezekiah had something to wager with God. He had, he said, look at all that I have done for you. 
Yes. If you had to die today, God forbid, what would you have to wager with him? All right. Amen. Who could you say you saved? What devil did you cast out? Y'all don't like that. That's all right. I'm, I'm in the house today. What devil did you cast out? How many bodies did you hear? You look real wonderful today. But how many clothes did you put on somebody else's back? Yeah. Uh, I've done that, Come on, don't yield up the ghost on me now. Keep the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to get you to understand something. That there will come a point in your life where you will be able to ask God of things because he has asked of you. And when God asks of you, ah, you didn't hear what I just said. There comes a point when Bishop, when if God, you can come to a place and say, God, I need you to rebuke death off of my cousin, off of my mama, off of my uncle. Because you remember when you told me to start the citadel of prayer, I started it. I wanted to give up. I wanted to throw the towel. They yeah. talked about me. People that said they was with me left me, but I stayed. Now I need you to do this for me. Yes, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. Yes, God. Yes. You gain favor with God. Yes. Okay, can I bring a witness? The Bible says Sodom and Gomorrah was getting ready to be destroyed. But there was a man named Abraham that had favor with God. And even though Lot was a heathen, he had enough influence with God to say, get my cousin out, let the rest of the people die. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord showed up to Lot's house and told him, come on out, somebody praying for you. Can you imagine having enough influence with God? Y'all better say something to me. Can you imagine having enough influence with God that you can ask of him and he answers you yay and amen? I pray that something hits your prayer life called yay and amen. You shout. I wish somebody would have shouted. I mean, like, screamed. I said, I pray that something hits your prayer life called yay and amen. That when you speak, heaven says yay. Yeah. I'm in the wrong church this morning. Oh, can you imagine that as soon as you kneel, you will stop praying questions and you will pray answers. That's the wrong time. I'm trying to figure out which side I can preach. I said, can you imagine that you will stop praying requests and you start praying answers? That's really what intercession is. You step in with the answer. Uh, you step in and you transact business. You say, God, save them this time. Rescue them because the rest of us. Okay. I went to another message. Let me go. I pray after the spirit of God, I feel my angels. They with me today. I said, I pray that something hits your prayer life Call yay and amen. <laughs> See, some of y'all ain't thinking about some of the things you've been asking God. You still trying to figure out whether I'm annoying or not, baby. This is validated. I said, I pray something hits your life. Call yay and amen. This time when you pray, you're going to pray the answer. God, I need this job so that I can save this amount of money, so that I can give this much towards this, so that I can sow here, and that I still be able to get my kids school clothes during this time. So God, I need you to go ahead and give me that job. What I vow to you is not just my tithes and offering, but I vow to you that I will steward this job. I will be on time. I'll make sure that I answer and do the duties that they call me to. God, this is my vow to you. That my first check, I vow that I will sow 30% of that to you. Let that be an offering. My God. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Watch this. This this, this, this is going to go over some of y'all here. Abraham 
unlock the secret. Uh, he opened up something called Jehovah Jireh. Okay, let me unveil this mystery to you about Jehovah Jireh. When you wager with God and offer him your best, the David said, I won't give you something that don't hurt me. I won't ever offer to you something that doesn't bring me agony. Abraham understood that if I give you my best, you've got to have open up a ram in a bush. You didn't hear what I just said. What people fail to realize in that scripture, it says, and there was a ram out in the bush. The place was called Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh is not just a person of God. It's a place. It's a realm you can enter into. How do I open Jehovah Jireh? How do I catch the realm of Jehovah Jireh? Yeah. How do I catch the... I knew it was going to go over some of y'all here. How do I catch the realm, the place called Jehovah Jireh? I offer him my firstborn. My mother is a single mother. My mother has fought for everything she got. She is the definition of perseverance. Yes. Mother has, well, I don't ever include myself, four of the children. <laughs> four of the children went to school, been getting ready to go to her master's program. She works Amen. for the county. Come on. But I watched her fight from working at SA. Uh -huh. go ahead. To now she works at the state oh, wow. correctional facility. Yes. I watched my mom do something. My mom would take her little check that she made from SA uh -huh. and she would sew most of it. That's it. Come wow. on. We would eat the burgers from SA. Come on, come on. I know y'all looking at this little outfit. Don't you let this fool you? We would eat the burgers that they throw out because of the expiration date. And I saw my mom so in tears, but she knew she had to give. But, but there was a time I'll never forget. I was working at 12 years old. I had frostbite on my hands because I had to walk to get my brothers and sisters some diapers and clothes. And I walked and I had glitching. My hands were black. I couldn't move them for hours. My mom was at work. She couldn't leave. She worked from sun up to sundown. But I still saw her so. I'll never forget. I was upstairs and the car had broke down. We were in bed of winter. 15 below. No heat in the car. Windows frost. My mom came to get me from my little child. And I was sitting there. I got home and I got on my knees in the middle of the kitchen. And I said, God, my mother gave to you. Oh, y'all not hearing me. I didn't say this to get your pity because I already got breakthrough. I said, God, my mother gave to you. You must give to her. I call a car from wherever it is. The next day, she got a 2007 Durango. No down payment. Let me tell you something. One day I prayed in my house. Over a half a million dollars showed up in my mother's account. Yes. Go ahead, Lord. Move, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Wait. You don't hear what I'm telling you. I told my mom, I said, Mom, there was somebody at your job that's stealing the money. That's where it came from. It's a white man. I said, if you do the righteous thing, they won't see this. If you do the righteous thing and tell them that the money showed up in your account, I said, you will never want for anything in your life. The Bible says righteousness will exalt the nation. I said, secure the rest of your destiny by telling them. They we waited weeks. They never called us. My mother turned it in and unveiled the whole scheme. They had stole millions. What am I trying to get you to understand? I pray that something hits your prayer line. Yeah. Oh, 
something called yea and amen. But you've got to have something to be a witness to. You've got to have something to testify of. You've got to have something to wager with God. Watch this. Look at this scripture. Watch this. Watch this. Acts 1, verse number 6. We're about to go because I want y'all to be able to eat so y'all can come over at 4. Somebody say amen. amen. Watch this. Watch this. It says, when they therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know what? The times and the sea or the seasons which the Father hath put what? It is all. But you shall do what? Receive power. Receive power of the Holy Ghost that come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. My witnesses unto unto me both in, in Jerusalem and all of what? Yeah. And all of what? Yeah. And to the uttermost parts of the what? Yeah. Okay, I got a few points I'm about to make them real quick. The first point is this. They were asking, are you going to restore the kingdom of uh, the, the kingdom of Israel? Jesus tells them, no, it's not for you to know the time and the season that the Lord had kept in his own power. Listen, you don't have, you, listen, power is not determined by the time that you're in. Amen. Time is determined by the power that's on you. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I said? He said times and seasons are held in the power of God. Come on, take notes. And I don't take a Christian is worse than demonized heathen. You got to take notes. How are you going to retain the word of God? Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. How is it that I gain influence in the earth? I understand the power that's on me. Amen. Amen. When I know the power that's on me, I know the time that I'm in. Amen. Half of the reason why we don't understand the time that we're in is because we don't know the grace that's been applied to our life. Amen. That's, true. Wow. that's why you must have a preacher, you must have a prophet to proclaim to you the time and the season so you understand the power that is available. Amen. So whatever decree that I make for the season that you are getting ready to enter into, that is the power that is available to you. That's why he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that God has held in his own power, but you shall receive power. Amen. Meaning that they were not waiting on Pentecost to come. They were waiting on the power so they can proclaim Pentecost. When the power showed up, they knew it was the time. Yes. Amen. 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 Deuteronomy says that God would give us power to get well. Wealth is not something that comes as a result of A, B, C, and D. It's a result of you obtaining power. Okay. All right. So, Apostle, what are you trying to say? He said, I'll make you witnesses. Amen. Once you know the power that's on your life, I'm about to proclaim the power that's on this ministry. I'm going to tell you what it is in a moment. Once you proclaim the power that's on your life, then you can enter into a place called witness. Yes. Glory to God. Okay. What does it mean to be a witness? When you are a witness, you are a living record. When people see you, it is like pulling up a judicial, legislated, documented piece of legislation that has already went through the circuit of court. You are a literal judicial record. That when man see you, you are a record of the power of God. Oh, oh. Why is the church not growing? Because we don't have no records. We don't have people that are witnesses. I want to know how many of you this week, besides this conference, did you witness to? I'm not talking about tell them about your church. I'm talking about tell them about your story. That I went through some stuff that tried to take me out. You were not so prideful, nor were you so haughty that you hid your secrets. But you told them to be honest. I was a smoker like you, but God came 
me to change my taste. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I was a whore like you. Uh, and if I don't watch myself, I slip back. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. Uh, but it's nothing but the grace of God. Uh, that good, you, you need to learn how to be a record. Yes. Yeah. A record. Thank Somebody you. say, I'm a witness. witness. Somebody say, I'm a witness. witness. Somebody say, just say, I'm foolproof. In order for you to be a witness, you have to be full proof that God is real. You have to be full proof that you've encountered God. That when men see you, they see a record that you have encountered Jesus. The Bible says that they knew that the disciples had been with Jesus just by the way that they talked. There was a time in the day when you could tell a saint from a sinner. You knew by the way they talked. You knew by the way they looked at you. They did not entertain gossip. They did not entertain malice. They did not backbite. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. They did not talk about the pastor. As a matter of fact, they would kill you about their pastor. They would kill you about their church. They did not uh, 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 entangle with other diverse doctrines. They stuck to the apostle to the apostles' doctrine. Amen. They Amen. were full proof. Now, in order for you to be foolproof, that means things that used to get through you shouldn't get through you no more. Uh -huh. It should be full. The stuff that used to bother you shouldn't bother you no more. You got to become foolproof. They shouldn't be able to say the same thing that they used to say and that thing still gets you. Yes. Yes. Do you know that that's not elementary? That's that's high five. That's that's preschool, preschool. stuff. Come on, man. Paul said elementary stuff is raising the dead. Hello. Uh huh. Oh, wow. uh -huh. Come on. Uh huh. Y'all don't hear teach. me. Yes, you better teach. Teach. That only happens in Africa. No, that's a lie. I've raised right. the dead here. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. I know you got done shouting. Don't even catch your breath. Don't build your little strength back up. I'm going to keep on preaching while you're building your little strength. So that you can go ahead and know. Raising the dead is elementary. So what is loving your neighbor? Come on. Come on. You come in the church. And all you do, you don't talk to nobody. Everybody got to come up to you. Talk about it. And you ain't even been here. Talk about it. You should be coming up to everybody. Child, y'all been praying for me. Uh -huh. You should have went and sat right next to a mother. Uh -huh. Come on. Yes. And let them rub on you the whole service. Come on, yes. So you don't want to be saved. You don't want to be delivered. You should have came on and sat right at the mother. Oh, and let her just go on and rub on you and pray on you, beat you in the back a little bit, and get that stuff up off you. You come in church and act like church owe you something. You owe God something. Yes. Where have you been? Yes. And then when your season of difficulty comes, you have nothing to give back to God. Huh? Say glory. Uh, okay. I'll leave that alone. We're talking good. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Yes, Lord. Keep on. God help me. God <laughs> help me in here. Yes, Lord, Lord. Help. you got everything to say about everybody else, but they're the only ones being faithful. Come on. Come on. Why they do it this way? Why they do it that Come way? Why they ask you for this? Why they ask? Because you're not faithful. Hello, oh, sir. When a spirit of faithfulness come on you, we know you a witness. Hello? Yeah. You can testify of your church. Yeah. Oh, when you have a ministry, when you have a church, God has entrusted that thing to you. Yes, and when he gives you that thing, when people walk through the doors of this church, you should have a godly proud a godly. that when they come here, they will meet God. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I can't speak for everybody. I know we may not be the most perfect people, but we people that love God. Hello. Oh. 
Oh, I wish somebody would talk to me. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Come on, sir. Why must I hold my church to a place of service in my life? It's because it is my reasonable duty to be a living sacrifice unto yes. God. I must serve the church because I must be a witness, a testament, a record. That this is the place of my salvation. Yes, sir. And if this is the place of your salvation, it shouldn't be a tacky mess. Come on. Oh, tacky Come on. mess. Come on. Your church represents your salvation. Yes, it does. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh. You're talking good. <laughs> I wish somebody would say glory. Glory. Come on. I tell my church, you must love rebuke. You must get to the place where you love rebuke because he only chastised those who he loves. If you only get sweetie, sweetie, goody, goody, he's just sweetening you up, fattening you up for hell. You must love rebuke because that means he wants to stretch you. He wants to groom you. He wants to... This church is getting ready to hit a cycle. It's getting ready to hit something called surplus. And when they come this time, you must have a spirit of excellence on you. And the spirit of excellence must come from the place of weakness. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Witness, witness. My God. Shout for y'all church. Yes. I'm concerned. Mm. I'm concerned. I'm going to have to come back. Because I'm concerned. I said there's something about the intro church called surplus. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. They are about to come again. Yeah. People My are going to be drawn yes. again. Yes. They're going to come to sit and see again. Thank you, Jesus. But my question is when they sit in the chair, what will you testify of? Did you hear what I just said? What will you tell when they sit there? What will you testify of? Will we see last night on you? Or will we see what God did for you? What will you testify of? Uh, will we see your attitude? Or will we see your gratitude? What will you testify? I wish I could preach. What will you testify of? The only reason why the church ain't nothing because you ain't nothing. What will you testify of? The church is only as good as it's I am tired of having two people blessed. Come on. What you say? When the Bible says, the book of Acts say, and there was no lack of money. No one. Yes, sir. None. Now let me tell you why there wasn't no lack. Because their first priority was their house. Yes. Woman of God, everything you sold in ministry has went up as a memorial to God. And God says, this is the hour I will break open the vow of your memorial. And I will render unto you my ear. And I will hear your prayer in this hour and season. For the death threat that is on, I believe is a grandson, I don't know. But I see a young man over there. And there is something that is after him. God says, I will repent the devourer that is coming upon him. And God said the prayer that you've been praying your memorial is about to be broken and your words will reach a place called glory. God says I hear the Lord say I will stir up the gift that lies on the inside of you. All that you have sown says the Lord I held it as a memorial I did not forget it to I did not forget it, says the Lord. But God says the hour is coming where I will break it open. I need somebody to shout for memorials. Okay. 
testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. God is about the answers of prayer. I said God is about the answers oh. of prayer. You've been praying for some things for six years. That thing is about to be answered. I said that thing is about to be answered. My question is, do I have any witnesses? Do I have any witnesses? That God, you can answer prayer. All right. Let me get to my, my, my point. Push it, push it. Yeah. Those were all things of building. Here's my point. He said, you will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, the day of Pentecost actually came. The Bible says in Acts 2, we'll probably go there. I'll see how I feel in the spirit. The Bible declares that it was noised abroad. When power really comes on a people, people can't help but hear about it. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. When your child, oh God, when your church is a testimony of power, yes. it can't help but be noised abroad. This is the thing. Yes. Over 500 people were waiting. Only 120 stayed. Right, what does right, that right, mean? Right, right. That means that the actual people who are first partakers are always a remnant. A remnant. But the multitude remnant. hears about what the remnant did. Yes. Yes. You don't wait until you are a cathedral to be no, a testimony. No, no. You do it while you're still a storefront. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. You do it while the sound system still acts up and why y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And when the chairs aren't all nice and, yes. and when the piano player gotta sit on a stack of chairs, that's when you start. Uh, that's when you go after power. You go after power when there ain't no desk in the office. You go after power when you when the deacon is the usher and the usher is the deacon. You go after y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I want you to know, Citadel of Prayer. I came to let you know something. All of your sowing is about to come into a place of harvest. I hear the Lord saying to you, what you have been doing, it's about to go public. God says it won't be quiet. It's about to go public. What will you testify? I came to let you know. You sold in secret. You sold behind closed doors. But it is about to go public. God said if you sow in secret, I reward you in the open. That's a city. Judea and Samaria, those are regions. What was God saying? 
God was saying, the whole city is about to hear what I'm about to do in your life. Y'all are not hearing a prophet today. No, I got, I'm in the wrong place. I said, what God is getting ready to do, give me some more value. I'm working real hard. I said, what God is getting ready to do in your life, the whole city is about to hear it. What he's about to do in your marriage, the whole city is about to hear it. They heard the rumor. They're about to hear the picture. They heard the lie. They're about to hear the picture. They heard the hurt. They're about to hear the picture. It's going public. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. It's about to go public. I lose an anointing for public ministry. I lose an anointing for public ministry. That thing, oh, that thing that is in this church is about to go public. I lay in prayer. It's about to go public. Conferences are about to go public. I hear the Lord say, they're not even going to want to come. But power go pull them. They're not even going to want to kick it. But power go pull them. Even if they're late, they're still coming. Even if they're tired, they, they're still coming. See how y'all just did something. Oh, see, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's something when heaven becomes your PR. Yes. I want you to know something. Thank you, Jesus. Every one of you. That's been sowing in secret. God said, this is the hour. I'm about to bless you in public. Yes, Lord. I was on my face. Give me some just worship. I just, I just, we're going to shout in a minute. I said, every one of you. That's been showing in secret. I want you for the next moments to get a pray in the Holy Ghost. Take me to the sixth of Father, I declare and I decree that this ministry will be pushed out of the room. I declare that this sixth year will be the sixth, will be the year of the water pot where you will pour into each year water that will turn into wine. Father, I declare that this is the year that what has been done in secret, what has been done on the backside of the mountain, it will come forth with great exploit. Come on, pray. Push yourself. Push yourself. 
I just heard the Lord say it's harvest time. I heard the Lord say, I'm about to bring a harvest for your labor. I heard the Lord say, I'm about to bring a harvest for your labor. I don't know what you've been laboring in, but I'm about to bring a harvest for your labor. You have a labor, and now it's harvest time. You've been faithful. Now see my faithfulness. Reward. Reward. Come on, if you want this reward, get up here. Come on. You got to come up here with expectation. I'm not about to labor with you. I need you up with a spirit. Oh.
that people are praying for. Come on!
impartation. Keep praying in the spirit. Wait till everybody gets the impartation. Come on, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it.
bless it for a good 60 seconds. If you believe the reward is here, open your mouth. Come on. Louder. Come on. Push in your belly. Come on. Shout till you bend over. see it in your spirit. You gotta see it in your spirit. Reward, 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 reward. Reward, reward. That thing is going public. Your enemy gonna see it. Your writer is gonna see it. The rumor is gonna see it. Your hater is gonna see it. Your family will see it. Reward! I dare you to put your eyes on it. I know we got to go. But I said, I dare you to put your eyes on it. God said, you are about to get a reward. Now, I just heard something that's real dangerous. I just heard something real dangerous. But some of y'all, I just heard the Lord say, some of y'all about to get double. <laughs> believe it because your brain don't believe it.
Simon in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, if you haven't given, I need you to give it and just throw it on the altar. Hallelujah. The man of God said $50. He was in the spirit. I have wrote a check for $50. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord. We're getting ready to leave. I'm so cold. Hallelujah. If there's anyone that's not saved, hallelujah, this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. I don't want to take for granted that everyone's saved in the house tonight. If you need to know our Jesus, we invite you. If you're in a backslidden state, he's married to you, so he's calling you even now. Hallelujah, so you can make your way up the front. Hallelujah, if you need a church home, this is a good, crazy church. They talk about us. Hallelujah, like the pastor said, but it's a good church. Hallelujah. And then can we thank God for us? You coming? Uh-oh. Can we do better than that? Can we celebrate that? Listen, um, 
We had talked a couple weeks ago and she told me she had called her mom. Hallelujah. And she told her mom that what was going on and her mother released her to us. Amen. And she was only supposed to be here under watch kid.